This is Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating an infinite series of doors, like we're going to some kind of twilighty zone that is similar but legally distinct from that show I didn't mention. Anyway, let's uh, dive in or through or whatever direction we're going into this tutorial. So here in After Effects, before we start building, I want you to have a look at what the project will actually look like. So we have a camera, we have an adjustment layer, and then we have basically one, two, three, four, five, six sets of doors that we're gonna be moving through. Now you can use more doors or less doors, but the number of doors we're using is important based on the length of the keyframes and how many and how far between each of these things are. So we could be doing this effect with fewer doors, we could be doing it with more doors. It really just depends on the length here and how many doors you want to see in between the start and end of the loop, because this is one long loop. And also I wanna call your attention to this, the loop out expression, which we're making liberal use of as we continue. So let's stop uh, rounding our mouth and get into it. So what I'm gonna do is gonna create a new composition we're gonna go HDTV, 1080, 24 frames a second, 1920 by 1080, uh, 30 second duration. And let's create the doors and create the first door. So I'm gonna make a new shape layer. And this shape layer is going to require a new rectangle. And the shape layer we're making right now is the door frame. And the door frame itself is going to require a rectangle path and the size, let's make it 350 by 600 perhaps. That seems like a good size door. We would like to add a stroke to this. I'm gonna give it a black stroke and we're gonna set the stroke to a size of 10. Well, then you can go a bit bigger if you want. It's all totally up to you. So we're using a stroke of 20 in this case, nice bold outline on the door. So this is the door frame. I'm gonna duplicate that door frame and this is going to be the wall solid. So the wall solid, the frame is black, let's make the wall solid uh, white. So we look into the contents, we have a rectangle path, let's duplicate that to create two rectangle paths. And now let's add to this a merge paths, extrude intersections. So anywhere these two paths overlap each other, I don't wanna see anything. So we're gonna take the second one and make it far larger like this. And then we don't need a stroke, we need a fill. So go ahead and delete that and just go ahead and add a fill to this. And that fill is going to be white. So what we've got here is a rectangle that is the inside and then a rectangle that is the outside and a merge path that says, you know, take away anywhere where they overlap. So we can now make uh, this far larger do, 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 like so, and like so, nice and large. I mean, it can just be perhaps 1920 by 1080. And we may have to resize this as we go. I'm not totally sure at this point, but we'll discover that together. So we have a door frame and we have a wall solid, excellent. Now we also need the door itself. So I'm gonna duplicate the door frame and I'm gonna call this door face. So we go into the door face into the contents, we have a stroke on there. We would like to also add a fill in here. And that fill is going to be white. Okay, good. And the stroke is still black. We want the stroke to come before the fill. And the stroke we'd like to take down, it doesn't need to be this thick. It can only be perhaps 10 pixels. So that's pretty good. Now, we wanna make all of these 3D because it is time to start parenting and rotating things. So the door face, we're gonna take our pan behind tool, which I pull up by hitting Y, and we're going to move this around, snapping it to the edge, which means when we rotate it, it's going to swing on that hinge. So that is good. Now, our first animation that we wanna do is going to be the door opening. So I'm gonna have the Y rotation go from here, and I'm gonna hold down Shift, page down, one, two, three, four, five, six, 60 frames ahead and we've hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe, and then we're gonna set another one as the door is nice and open at uh, 135. So it's open, we can tell the door is open, 
and uh, that's pretty much all we need to know about the door. So we have the door opening and it's opening up to reveal the outside. Everything seems good. Now the door face we'd like to parent to the door frame and the door frame we'd like to parent to the wall solid. So as the wall solid moves, so too does everything else. So let's set up its transformation as well. So the wall solid is going to be moving on its Z axis and we're going to set a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end. The end state we know already is going to be too far towards the camera for us to see any more of that door frame. So that's the end state. The beginning state is a little bit more ambiguous that we just want to grab the value and push it way, way, way back in space, just far back there, very tiny, something like uh, 30,000 should be ideal. Now we can create a new camera and use the optics of the camera to intensify or lessen that kind of thing, but uh, all in at a 50 millimeter preset, it kind of is what it is. Okay, that seems pretty good. Now we also need to do some easy easing on these keyframes, so we're going to hit U to bring those up, and I'm just going to hit F9 to easy ease those, and that's just because we kind of want the ending here to be a little bit easier, so it's, you know, more up front with us here now. And uh, I'm just going to push it to be a little bit like this, so that the door frame is coming more at us, and then slows down as we get closer. Okay, that's pretty good. Now the door is being used to cover up what will be uh, the other objects coming in behind it. So that's important to know as well, that the door is not only for aesthetic narrative reasons opening, but it's also to cover up what will be uh, the appearance of other doors behind this door. So that's a little, little trick for you right there. Now we kind of have all the parts we need to continue. You can make this a more 3D door or less 3D door if you want. So let's say you want a more three-dimensional door. Well, duplicate the door face and call this door back and make sure it's behind the face and parent it to the door face, pull up its rotation and remove it. You don't need it. And uh, we're gonna alter its position to be uh, just off the door like here. So about uh, maybe 10, 10 pixels offset like so. So that's something you can do. And then if you wanna have this filled in here, which I recommend you do, you're gonna to wanna to duplicate this and call it uh, door edge and that is also parented to the door face. So I'm gonna call it its position and we need to slide it out so that it comes to rest at the edge of the door here. So we wanna move this out to be at the edge, which is at 175, okay? Now, this doesn't need to be 350 wide. In fact, it needs to be much less than that, but let's first change the rotation here to be at zero and then zero and just make sure that you bend it, bend it back so that it's at 90 degrees to the door here. In fact, it's negative 90, so it's like that. And two, 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 just wanna make sure that it lines up with the door here in actuality. So I wanna set door edge's position to be at zero here, okay? Now we're going to scale it, scale it along, it, along its axes to line up better there we go. So we're kind of faking building some 3D geometry here. So just bear with the process. I'm gonna change the fill to be black, fill in the space. So there you go. Now you've got a black edge on the door. So that's working out. And you can see how it animates through that. It's the door opening and perfect. Pretty seamless stuff. So if you wanna add more detail to the door, you are more than welcome. Just go crazy with that kind of thing. Uh, I don't see the need at this point. You can do any amount of embellishing you would like within the shape layers as you see fit. But what we wanna do now is take all of these wonderful things and we wanna loop them. So let's create our first loop. First, we're gonna loop uh, the movement on the Z axis. So hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, and you're gonna type in L-O-O-P, capital O-U-T, and then in brackets and inside quotation marks, you're gonna type cycle. Now this means that once it completes the last keyframe, it's going to start over from the beginning. So we've already got our first cycle coming through and that's working out quite well. 
We need to apply that same logic to the door face. So hit U to bring up those keyframes. Hold down Alt, click on that, and paste. So it's going to be always opening like so. Now I'm going to take a white solid and you can just go create new white solid if you want and put that in the back here so that our initial state isn't as noticeable. So it seems like the door is in an infinite white field. Now we're going to take these, we're going to duplicate all of them, and we're going to move it all below the other layers. I'm going to just shift them all by holding Alt Shift page down. I'm going to hit that twice to move us ahead. And now we have a door inside that door. And you can see it's just cleared. So the door opens and reveals a new one as it comes through. Now, unfortunately, this door is not going well enough to allow that. So we need to slip in another one in between there. But let's uh, tweak up this door here while we're at it. So we want to invert all of the colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the back. So this wall here, we need to invert that. So this fill is white, we're gonna change it to have a fill that is black. And then the door frame here, pull up its colors. It has a stroke that is black. We're gonna give it a stroke that is white. Okay, that's good. And then the door back, hit U, U on this. It has a stroke that is black, you change it to be white. It has a fill that is white, you change it to be black. Okay, this all seems pretty straightforward. And then the door edge is black and black. Change it to be white and white. Okay, good. So far, so good. And then door face 2, UU, pulls up its information. Change the black to white and the white to black. Okay, cool. That seems neat. So one of the issues we need to overcome immediately is that the black back here is not large enough. So we we'll go ahead and take the wall solid here, hit UU, and uh, just scale up everything that we need to uh, make this work. And these are vector shapes, so feel free to be generous with the size. Don't feel you need to be stingy in any way with uh, how big they are. And if it starts to poke out beyond the bounds of the first one, then just go and tune it up as well. So just grab that size and amp it up. Woo, just like that. Cool. So it's coming on, it's coming on, and now we need to continue duplicating and continue this chain. So I'm gonna take these, all of them actually, and uh, duplicate them. So we get a lot of layers, drag them down below, and then hold down Alt, hit page down, and uh, shift them along. So you can see we now have a nice long looping set of things looping and moving infinitely through this entire scene. So one of the things that you'll want to be aware of is we have one, two, three, four sets, but if we look at the first set, it starts looping right here when the last set starts coming through. So it's superfluous. It's actually getting covered up by the first set and you don't even see it. You don't even notice that it's there. So. The trouble is you want to make sure that you stretch everything out and make sure that everything is fitting within the correct time space in order to be useful to you. So what we did was we moved everything ahead only 10 frames each. So we've got one and then two. So then we're going to duplicate these so that we are able to loop it successfully within the amount of frames that we have. And then we duplicate that again, put that down below. Good. So you see how that goes. Everything is now caught in an infinite loop because we have managed to fit our motion within the looping cycle so that it happens seamlessly. Now, the last thing that we need to do is add some color. I've purposefully used only black and white so that it's very easy for us to go layer, new, adjustment layer. And when working in two tones, you can just take a tint and you can say, make the black uh, a totally different color. We're gonna make it like a light red, something in this sort of faded burgundy. And then anything that's white, uh, we'll actually set it to be sort of an off-white. I think that would be quite agreeable for us. Kind of like this. 
and uh, that's pretty good. Now you can set all sorts of rotation and such for the camera if you like, so I'm gonna hold down Alt and click on the Z rotation and type in time times 10. So that as time goes on, we start to twist and turn and everything starts to get a little bit weirder as we go through the doors. And uh, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, do all sorts of cool stuff. But this is how you can create a pretty simple infinite moving through doors. And uh, go ahead and try it with windows or cupboards or anything you'd like, just give it a go. It's nice and abstract, uses vector lines so that it's always gonna scale up nicely as it comes at the camera and should be no problem for you. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you wanna learn more about After Effects and other applications, stop by the blog at premiumbeat.com and uh, you can get insider information from industry experts who work with these things every day and will share some of our expertise with you. And of course, come to Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. And if you're interested in more of my stuff, check out evanabrams.com or tweet at me at EC Abrams and uh, check out my YouTube channel. There's cool stuff there too. So again, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully this has been helpful to you. And uh, subscribe to the stuff, check out the blog, and I will see you around the internet. Thanks again and have a nice day.